J.P. Sears, the most spiritual man on the planet, has officially changed his mind about God and Christianity. If you're not familiar with J.P., he runs the YouTube channel Awaken with J.P. I first saw him years ago in one of his ultra-spiritual life videos where he plays a parody of a spiritual wellness guru. I'm J.P. Sears. I'm ultra-spiritual. And I'm going to teach you how to be ultra-spiritual today. The reason why I like to do yoga photo shoots is it's probably the most effective way for me to bring love and light into the world. Have you accepted organic food into your life? What? I've been having life-changing results since I learned how to get offended. I love using essential oils as alternative remedies for common ailments like colds and the flu instead of using remedies that actually work. Back then, I couldn't tell what he really believed because he was playing a character. But it turns out that JP was, or maybe still is, a wellness guru, a spiritual life coach. That's how he started on YouTube. He was making self-help and wellness videos. But he eventually posted some videos that were making fun of ultra-spiritual people who go overboard and become judgmental and condescending toward anyone who isn't as ultra-spiritual as they are. And those videos took off, so he stuck with that approach. More recently, JP was making videos about lockdowns and mandates, so he seemed like a comedic, conservative, cultural commentator. This week, however, he posted a video titled, I Changed My Mind About God, Here's Why. But again, he plays a character in a lot of videos, so I didn't know if it was going to be a serious video or not. Fortunately, he said this early on. And also, quick disclaimer, this video is not intended to be a comedy video. And if that offends you, pray about it. Now, when someone starts talking about praying and going to church, Christians are happy for him. But we don't run around like the Dawa gangs pretending that Someone converting or saying something nice about our religion is some kind of proof that our religion is true. When the Dawa gangs get a convert, they shout from the rooftops, You see? So-and-so converted! This is the proof! It's the proof that our religion is true! Really? What about all the people who leave your religion and become Christians or atheists? What about that? That's no proof at all! Fact is, people change their minds all the time. People changing their minds doesn't prove much. So, I'm not terribly interested in commenting on the mere fact that someone changed his mind about God and Christianity. But I am interested in a person's reasons for changing his mind. When someone explains why he changed his mind, we can ask two important questions. One, are they good reasons? And two, are they reasons that could be shared by other people? And as I watched JP's video, I was thinking, this is something that a lot of people are about to go through. So let's watch some clips from JP's video about God and Christianity, because we're going to be hearing a very similar story over and over and over again in the near future. JP begins by explaining what he used to think about Christianity. I used to have a lot of judgment about religion and Christianity, thinking like, ah, it's not bad, but it's like, dude, that's so outdated, and like, why are you religious when you could be spiritual? Religion is like phone books, overhead projectors, blockbuster video, dial-up internet, MySpace. It's old and outdated. I became very inundated in the spiritual movement. So, like, spirituality, not religion. Be spiritual, not religious, said every Hollywood actor ever. Due to the religious connotations, JP didn't even like using the word God. I used to have shame about saying the word God. You know, back when I thought, like, dude, I'm spiritual, I'm so cool. I used to have shame about using the word God, and instead I'd say, oh, the universe. Yeah, I'd just create different names. He thought that certain religious practices, like prayer, may have a positive impact on people, but not because people are actually talking to God. I used to think, well, prayer's probably a good thing. It'll maybe give you a more positive mood. 
but I didn't truly believe in the power of prayer where people are directly asking God for God's support and then receiving that support from God. And when he thought of religion, he thought of wars and scandals. I would look at all the scandals that have happened in the name of religion. I mean, so many wars have been fought based on religion, based on God. So I would kind of throw the baby out with the bathwater, like, oh, do that dirty bathwater. Yeah, if that's what Christianity is, screw that. If that's what God is, screw that. But JP says he learned a lot from his pursuit of spirituality. I got a lot of benefit from spiritual teachings, like different teachers, different books, different philosophies. Obviously, if you want to be on the cutting edge of spiritual awesomeness, you don't want anything to do with that old VHS cassette we call Christianity. But when I look back, I can see I was excluding some amazing traditional Christian values, beliefs of God and ways of connecting with God that I now really value. No school like the old school, am I right? So what happened, JP? Over the past three years, I found myself accidentally getting more Christian. Like without even intentionally trying, like setting out on a mission, like I want to become more Christian. It's just been effortlessly happening for me. He's been adopting more Christian values and beliefs and practices over the past few years without intending to do so. And he noticed that he's not alone. Now, I don't think I'm unique there because I've seen a lot of people and I've heard a lot of people telling me similar stories. Which raises an obvious question. So I asked the question, why are people getting more Christian without even trying? Is it because of that Jesus Revolution movie? Here's what I believe to be true about that. The presence of evil and Satan that evil emanates from has never been more obvious. True. Evil all around. Evil isn't hiding anymore. It's coming at us through authoritarianism, movements, people, groups, companies, governments. Yes, lots of evil. What's your point? If you're not someone who's willing to propagate evil, then there's a natural occurrence that happens when you're in the presence of evil, you polarize to the other extreme. The presence of evil makes you lean away. And then, therefore, what direction are you leaning towards? Well, that would be the direction of God. Seeing the presence of evil, that's why I've just accidentally been getting more Christian, why so many other people are. Interesting. People are becoming more Christian without realizing it because they're seeing so much evil and they're trying to get away from the evil. I think the evil that's in this world is doing a great service of driving a lot of people to find God in ways that they previously hadn't. So even though evil is bad, the evil can lead to a positive outcome. And also specifically, we could say, hey, there is an attempt to bring communism all over the world. Sounds like someone doesn't like communism. And there's a reason why communists have their number one objective to disconnect people from God. With full-on communism, they ban religion. Why is that? Why would communists have a problem with religion? Because they don't want people having faith in a real higher power. If you get people to disconnect from the teachings of God and the ways of God, the belief in God, those communists get to be your higher power. Indeed. As Francis Schaeffer once put it, no totalitarian authority nor authoritarian state can tolerate those who have an absolute by which to judge that state and its actions. An authoritarian state can't tolerate a higher authority than the state. So those who want an authoritarian state have to destroy belief in a higher authority. All right, JP is reacting to evil in its various forms. Where's he at now? I now look at traditional Christian values with a lot of respect and reverence, and I'm integrating those more into my life. Christian values around family first. Christian values around faith in God. 
And I now believe that the power of prayer is the most important thing you and I can do. I will make no claims that I'm the world's best Christian or most devoted Christian, but I'm looking at these Christian values and they make way more sense to me now than they previously did. What about your problem saying the word God, JP? So I'm delighted to say now I have not only no shame about saying God, but I actually have joy in saying God. God. And what about your view of church scandals and such. Now I have a much more mature look where I do believe evil goes wherever it can. The devil masquerades as an angel of light. So if the devil wants to control people, a good way for the devil to do that is to find people where they're trying to find God. I think we need discernment. I will discern evil from churches, discern evil from God. That's a start. And get this, right now, I think we're at a time of spiritual warfare. You think? We look at what's going on in the world, conflict between different nations, division all over the place. We want to teach this to your kids. And they're like, ah, you seem kind of satanic. Pretty creepy. Even though we see these literal things playing out at the physical level, I think what we're seeing is symptoms of what's happening at more of a metaphysical level. Very interesting. The conflicts we see around us are a symptom of a deeper spiritual and metaphysical conflict. In a time of spiritual warfare, what's on the line is you and I, our souls, our children. One side wants to control us, the other side wants to free us. There's an underlying spiritual war going on, and it's something that we can't ignore because everything we love is at stake. And I think what we do in our day-to-day -day lives, our actions, our thoughts, our words, is determining which side of the spiritual warfare we're fighting on. So, there's a spiritual war, everything is on the line, we're all already involved because everything we do is supporting one side or the other, so we need to make sure we're on the right side. See why I said I'm far more interested in a person's reasons for changing his mind than in the mere fact that a person changed his mind? JP is on an amazing journey. I'm glad he's including us in that journey by sharing what's been happening in his life. If you'd like to watch his full discussion about God and Christianity, his video is about 25 minutes long. The link is in the description box. May the risen Lord bless many of his viewers to awaken with JP.